Good morning, everyone. I've had no strawberries on the plot now for a couple of years. They've mostly been at home in baskets and tubs, and I'm going to rectify that. I've got two beds behind me here, uh, 16 foot by 4 foot, and I'm going to put one variety in each for this summer. Now, before we go on, just in case this video gets noisy, you might be able to see just over my shoulder, there's some guys up from trees here. Uh, we've got ash dye back along that hedge and here rectifying that. So just in case it's too noisy, I'm only going to do the one bed today in case I need to refilm this, then I can do it on that back bed. And the strawberry that I've got for this, this bed is Cambridge favourite. Many of you will know if you've grown and bought your own strawberries before, Cambridge favourites, it's a favourite of everyone. It's a standard strawberry. So we're going to get them in first. I'm going to rough this ground up. These are no dig beds, but they weren't exactly the best when I put them together. They didn't have the best compost or the best start, how I would have liked to have done it. They were made in a bit of a rush. So I'm going to get the claw on this, claw it all up, and then we'll go from there. Now this claw of mine just helps with loosening the top couple of inches of the surface of the soil up and then I can rake it down level, take out any big clumps like that one there. This bed worked hard last year, had lots of flowers and stuff in it. Um, so I'm going to put some amendments in it also. So I'll go through this whole bed and then we'll come back. So these are my strawberries in here. Um, I've got 30 of them to put in this bed. This is Cambridge favourite. And these were bare root plants. You could see the roots that came in here. They came surrounded with a little bit of damp soil, but they spent the last four or five days in this bucket of water, just taking on back some of, the, they tend to dehydrate a little bit when they're, they're sat in postage. So rehydrate them in that bucket of water and they've responded by throwing up some leaves so they're ready and raring to go. Now as I've, as I've now clawed through this I'm going to add some blood fish and bone. These strawberries are going to work very hard for me. It's now the end of March near enough and we've got April, May, June, July and they're going to be in all, in all that time they've got to get the roots down and start growing, send up more leaves then set flowers, then set fruit, which I'm then going to pick, and then they're going to set some more fruit, hopefully, and then eventually send out runners. It's a lot to ask of a plant in that time. And whilst I think there's no bed, no dig bed would be good enough for them, I'm going to add a little extra. And I've got some blood fish and bone here, which I'm just going to sprinkle on this bed, and then I'm going to rake it all into the bed and then rake it level. So I'm just going to sprinkle a handful, and I don't mean a great big handful like that, it's just a handful like that, just like that, and then just spread it over about a metre squared. Just being careful not to use too much of it, and I'll do that over the whole bed. So with a little bit of feed spread on top of the soil, I'm just going to use a, a narrow rake, very small rake, just to rake it into that top inch or two of the soil. Just to get it combined a little bit, mixed up a little bit. So now with a big landscaping rake, I just want to rake it less, nice and level for the next step. If you haven't got one of these, then you just crack on with what you've got, the smaller rake. Not many people have one of these rakes lying around like I do. With the ground now fluffed up and then fertilized, raked in and then rake level. I've put some weed membrane on the top and I've just loosely sort of pinned it down with some bricks for now. I'll tuck it all in properly later. Now I need to mark out for where I'm going to plant through this membrane um, with the strawberries 
and I've determined the size for the amount of strawberries that I've got and along this line every 16, 16 inches there'll be a hole and then I'll plant a strawberry plant in it. Usual and accepted practice with weed brimberine and planting through it is to come along cut a little cross in it peel back those corners that you reveal, plant your plants in and fold the corners back in. And that works very well, but a few years ago, I was watching an American uh, flower, flower farmer, she was, a lady called Erin, I think, um, and she had this great big steel plate template. She would put out a weed membrane, put this template down, and then with one of those great big weed torches, the things that have got the massive long arm and the massive burner on the end, she would come along and burn holes through this template that she'd make so that she'd got all her flowers equidistant along. And then later on, because the edges were burnt, they didn't fray and, and she could roll it up use it elsewhere on the farm and I thought that was a great idea and I had kind of forgotten about it but somebody on my Patreon reminded me of that just recently when I was discussing something else on there to use one of these the thing that just dropped out of my pocket which is a little creme brulee browner it's a little tiny flame and if you just measure the distance and I want about 16 inches it just burns a hole and it does it nicely so that you don't get any frayed edges and that's big enough because the soil underneath is now sort of all fluffed up. All I've got to do now is just poke my finger in there, put the plant in, put it back in. That'll never fray and the corners won't blow up. Less area for weeds to come up. So I'm going to do this whole patch like this and then eventually that one over there, just using this little Bunsen burner thing and say, those edges are nicely sealed, will never rip. Perfect solution for me. So there we go, top tip there. By the way, the link to my Patreon is just underneath this video. So with all my holes burnt into this fabric now, I've just unbundled one of the bundles of these plants in here, and I'm gonna trim the roots. You've got a hard knobbly bit. <laughs> tempted to cut but I won't you've got a hard knobbly bit here at the base of the leaves which is the crown of the plant and you want you can trim your plants if you want to to about four or five inches and because all this ground is nicely fluffed up using my homemade dibber just dibble a hole and get those roots in and plant your plants just leave the crown slightly above the soil level when you firm it in. And that's, that's it, that plant is done. So again, find the crown, the knobbly bit, trim off your roots four or five inches. Get in there, dig a little hole, and then just fill around it, leaving the crown proud of the soil level. If it goes underneath the soil level, it can rot off. It's a very easy mistake to make. And that is pretty much it, really. So this is this bed done now. 30 plants in here, all Cambridge favourites. And you'll notice I've put some blue hoops over it so that later on, when they're about in flower, uh, or turn into, the flowers are turning to fruit, sorry, I can put um, a bird cover over it, stop the birds eating them. And... Uh, the only thing you've got to watch for now is as they grow up and as they start to flower, if we get a, a frost predicted, then I'll come down and fleece these plants, stop the frost getting to the flowers. You'll see the centre of the flower turning black and then that flower's dead. If you see that, just pick them off and hopefully some more flowers will come and replace them. So I just need to do the same. I'll do that off camera now with that bed, repair it the same way, put the cover down, everything exactly the same and eventually put the hoops on and then this little job is done there we go so don't forget to subscribe to this channel the button's just underneath this video and you'll be able to see me hopefully getting some fruit off this and uh, being able to take it home I'm so looking forward to it because we haven't had a big crop of strawberries 
for a long time. Had a few from home, but this is all the difference. So this is the Cambridge favourite. The ones I'm putting in the other bed are called Honey Oi. Um, and I'm hoping one will carry on from the other to get a continuous crop through the summer. Um, but whatever crop we get and whenever we get it is what we get. But that's it. That's it for today. Please look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Ta-ra now.